If you're in online business, there is almost nothing more important than content. Content is what draws an audience of people to you. It does the heavy lifting in your online business. It builds your know, like, and trust factor. People watch your content, they're helped by it, they get your lead magnet, they get on your email list, and they're presented with your offers. So content is the front door. It is so vital. So it's important to make sure that you're not making one of these three common mistakes that people make with their content. I have seen these across the board. I have made some of these mistakes myself, depending on when we're talking about and how careful I'm being. These are common, but they are bad. <laughs> They're bad mistakes to make. And if you want content to do what it's supposed to do in your online business, you have to avoid these three mistakes. We're going to get into what those are in just a second. My name's Lane. I love to help aspiring digital entrepreneurs start and grow their online businesses. So be sure to subscribe if you want to learn how to grow your online business and make sure to go over to lanesebring.com slash super simple. You can pick up my free super simple guide to your first $500 online. These are the exact steps that I use to grow my multiple six figure online business. And in this guide, I'm going to talk about how you can choose a niche and how you can build a content plan and how you can even start the beginnings of your first product. So go to lanesebring.com slash super simple. So I've been making content for a long time. I started out over at my other online business, Preaching Donkey, with written content. And then I started a podcast and then I wrote a couple books and then I started YouTube in 2019. And then this started in 2020. So just YouTube alone, I've made hundreds of videos between the channels that I've ran. I've also coached a lot of people as they've gotten their start in online business and I've looked at their content strategy and I've seen these mistakes recurring. So I wanna go through each one of these so that you can avoid them for yourself. Mistake number one is content that doesn't solve a problem. Your content cannot just be about something. It can't be about your idea or about your niche. It has to solve a problem. It has to be something that when somebody goes to YouTube, for example, and they put in the search bar a question or a problem they have or something they're unsure about or curious about, and you end up on the other side of that search, which is something that is so powerful about your content. You will end up on the other side of people's searches. When they click on your videos, if you don't solve their problem with your content, if it doesn't help them, then it's not going to work. That kind of content doesn't work. And I've done all of it. I've done content about things just because it was interesting to me and I've done content that solves a problem. And if you hit this really well, and your content solves a problem, it can go a long way. So for example, I do a lot of content about Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one online business solution. It's an all-in-one online business platform. It's your website, your email marketing, your funnel, your course hosting, everything kind of all wrapped into one place. So I do a lot of videos about Kajabi, but they're not just a about Kajabi, they're helping solve problems about Kajabi. So people wonder, is it worth the price? So I have a lot of videos on that. How do I use it? So I have videos on that. How do I upload my course to Kajabi? So I have videos on that. How do I build a landing page? How do I make my website? How do I make my email list work? All of those are problems that my content solves. So you wanna think when you're making content, how do you solve people's problems? problems because that's what proves your worth in your content. It's actually what proves the worth of your business because what you want people to say is when they're interacting with your free content, whether it's on YouTube or you do written content somewhere, or you have an audio podcast, when they're consuming your free content, you want them to be saying to themselves, wow, if their free content is this good, I can't even imagine how powerful and awesome and transformative their courses must be, or their membership must be, or their paid coaching must be. You want them to say that. And the only way to get there is to solve a problem. And so using the example of my Kajabi content 
That's what I try to do there. And by the way, if you're not on Kajabi, you should totally use my link, lanesebring.com slash Kajabi. You get a 30 day free trial, plus a bunch of exclusive bonuses from me. It truly is the best all in one online business solution. So the first mistake is content that doesn't solve a problem. The second mistake people make with their content is holding back too much. This really comes from a place of scarcity and fear. The fear is, if I give away too much in my free content, then what is left for me to charge for? And so what happens is people end up doing what's called teaser content, where their free content really doesn't teach anything or give any hard skills. It's more just kind of to get people's interest peaked about their paid content. It's basically just a glorified set of infomercials. The problem with that is if you take that approach, number one, people hate that because it wastes their time. It's like, unless I buy from you, you're not gonna help me. So it frustrates people. It also prevents you from building the kind of know, like, and trust deep relationship that you could build with an audience if you made content that was substantive. Because when people watch your content, they're making judgments. They're trying to decide, is this person's content helping me? Is it solving my problem? Is it teaching me something? Can I use it? This is why I say you need to have consistent, helpful, relevant content every single week, at least one piece of pillar, consistent, helpful, relevant content every week because you need people to consistently see that you're showing up and you're actually delivering something of value, that if they'd never bought anything from you, they would still be served just by your free content. Don't hold back. How do you know what to put in your free content and what to charge for in a course? Well, I actually have a lot to say about this. I've done videos about it. You can check one out right here. When people buy courses, they're not just buying the information, they're buying the aggregation. In other words, the collection of that information into one place. And they're buying the synthesizing, in other words, like organizing it into a flow. And they're buying a simplified, clear path. They're buying the aggregation, they're buying the synthesis, and they're buying a simplified, clear path. If those things are present in your paid products, whether it's your courses, your community, your coaching packages, then they are worth money. And it does not matter how much of the content that's in those courses also is showing up in your free content. That's okay because your free content is not aggregated and synthesized and simplified into a clear path. It's disparate pieces of content here and there and it might add up if somebody went through all of it and put it all together, they could maybe map out a clear path for themselves and you're not trying to hide it. If they wanna do that, they can, but what they're paying for when they pay for a course is the aggregation of all that into a clear path that solves a real problem at a deep level. So as long as you keep in mind that that is what people are paying for, you don't have to hold back anything. You can give your best stuff away for free to put it the way Graham Cochran puts it. You can just be very open and generous with your free content, knowing that your courses are going to be even more valuable because they are transformative. They will take someone from where they're stuck all the way through to their desired outcome, every single milestone along the way that they need to hit. And that doesn't happen in your free content because someone has to organize all that information into a logical flow and then give people direct actions to take. That's what your course is gonna do, your free content. Do not settle for teaser content. That's only going to frustrate people and it's going to keep your content from doing what it could do for you, which is a powerful, powerful thing. It, it can be the front door of your online business reaching out, pulling people in, building trust with them and proving your worth. So don't hold back. So the first mistake that people make is they don't solve a problem. They're just talking about something. The second mistake that people make is they hold back too much. And the third mistake people make is they don't have a clear call to action. So I mentioned that your content needs to be consistent, helpful and relevant. 
but there's a fourth quality that your content needs to have, and that is bridge. So it needs to be consistent, helpful, relevant, and it needs to bridge to your email address. In other words, you wanna make bridge content and not dead end. A lot of times the mistake people make is they will finish a piece of content. And I did this for years over at Preaching Donkey, where I'd finish a piece of content back in the early days and I'd be like, here's how to outline your message better. All right, see you in the next video, dead end. No call to action, nothing that would get that person from that piece of content to my email list. I cannot stress this enough, every single piece of content that you make, especially your pillar content that goes out like on YouTube, your main pieces of content or your main piece of written content or your main podcast episode, that type of content, every single piece needs to have a call to action. If you noticed in this piece of content that you're consuming, I had a call to action towards the beginning where I mentioned my guide, lanesebring.com slash super simple. That is my call to action. And what that does is it allows people who maybe are watching this, and maybe this is you, you're watching this, you're saying, hey, this is really helping me. There's, these are some things about my content that maybe I haven't considered before, or I need to work on, or it's just some reminders for me. Either way, it's helpful, it's encouraging, it's some guidance that maybe I needed. And so you hear me talk about lanesebring.com slash super simple, a free helpful guide on how to make your first $500 online. And so there are those of you who will say, yeah, I'll get that. That's a call to action. And it makes this content bridge instead of dead end. If it was dead end content, I would just say, I hope these three things helped you. See you next week, right? And then I, if I do that, I just have to hope you come back. I just have to hope that you'll find me again. But if I can get you on my email list, well, now I'm in your inbox and I can show you the incredible value that I have to offer, both in more free content and in paid products. So make sure that you have bridge content that is inviting people to go deeper. When you don't, the problem is you're just relying on the content platform you're on. So if you're on YouTube, like most of my videos are, then what happens if YouTube goes away, right? I mean, we can get into the importance of building an email list. That's a whole different conversation for a whole different day. But just down to these single pieces of content, if a single piece of content doesn't have a call to action, what happens if that single piece of content just blows up? You never know which ones are gonna blow up. So what happens if it blows up and it gets a ton of views and it goes viral and yet, there's nothing that draws people from that directly to your email list. Don't make that mistake. If you clear up those three mistakes with your content, you'll be well on your way to a content strategy that does what it's supposed to do. Build your know, like, and trust factor, reach out, pull the people in that are interested in your topic and prove your worth, give you validity in their mind so that they want to go even deeper with you into the rest of your offers. Check out this video if you want to see what people pay for when they pay for courses. I think it'll really help you if you want to know even deeper the distinguishing factors between free content and paid. So I'll see you in that video.